Welcome to Tech Brother with Amir. Today we are going to learn how to create comma delimited file with timestamp uh, in SSIS package. So let's uh, take a look for the source what we are going to use. So we have a table um, select start from debut customer uh, and it has some records and uh, this table is existing in the in the database called the test database. All right. So that's where it is. And what we want to do, we want to create a comma delimited file uh, from this table and uh, then we want to add the timestamp for each of the execution, the file will be created. So let's go and uh, create a new folder where our files will be. So we can call it output folder. Okay, so in this folder, our files are going to be created. And uh, let's open uh, SSDT or bids, whatever you have, according to version of SSIS you're using. I have SSDT as uh, I'm using SQL Server 2014. Okay, open a new project. If you have uh, not created a project already, you can create a new one. I have already um, created one, so I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to use Tech Brothers project. That's SSIS project. Okay, inside this project, I need to create a new package. Okay, I go to SSIS packages, right click here, and new SSIS package. All right, so new SSIS package is created. I can rename it um, so I can uh, create flat file, text file, comma delimited file, whatever you want to say. Uh, flat file with timestamp or date time. All right. Okay, so here what we need, first of all, we need um, a data flow test that will be used to create a, a file and uh, from the source and the destination. So in this inside the data flow task, we are going to use uh, OLEDB source uh, that's going to read the records from our table. So OLEDB source, bring it here. Okay, so inside OLEDB source, you have to create a connection to your database from where the, where the table exists or store procedure or a view, you are going to use that. So click new. Okay, so right here you need to provide the server name. You can always uh, click it on drop down. It will, uh, you know, try to get all the servers available on your network or um, you can go back and, uh, you know, get the server name from your, um, by using the query, the rate server name. And uh, I prefer this one because uh, it is quick and there uh, is some time, you know, if you have a lot of servers, this, this one is going to uh, take some time. So instead of uh, clicking here, you can always go and copy paste your server name and paste it there. All right. So then uh, you select your database. We have test DB. All right. Let's test the connection. Okay. So we created the connection. To the database all right the next one is uh, select a table or a view so it give you you can run a sql command you, you can select just in the drop down table or view if you do this one it is going to provide you all the tables available in this uh, um, database so right now you know it is saying um, no, no no table exists in this one because we had made the connection to, to test db but we, there isn't any table. So but I was showing you guys here, I have the definition and everything ready. So we can go ahead and create the table. You know, uh, first uh, I didn't uh, uh, create it in the test DB. I created uh, by default in master. So I'm going to change it and create in the test DB. Okay. So let's create this table with uh, some records in test DB. Okay. So we have this uh, table now in test DB. So if you go back here, it is uh, it should show us, you know, the new table okay so table is here but using this one just from the drop down i do not recommend that let's say tomorrow your definition is changed and then uh, your package will start failing um you know uh, as it would not be able to find a new column um, that is mapped to the flat file or you know or uh, you have added a new column that is not part of uh, flat file destination mapping 
So what I recommend, I, I recommend go to the SQL command, you know, and write your command with the, uh, see, you know, select query or whatever function or if you are using view or anything. So even uh, I would not use select star from the customer because if you add a new column, uh, you know, it's going to bring that column. So I, I, I would recommend, you know, um, use the names of the column, F name, uh, L name, address, phone number. All right. And if you have a, a lot of uh, columns, you know, and uh, instead of just uh, writing it like this, you can always go here, go to tables, and then right click on the table and say select top thousand records, you know, and then remove these top thousand and and also remove the database name because we already made the connection to the database, so we don't need it. So just copy it from here, you know, and go back to your SSIS package and paste it there. So if you have a lot of column, you don't have to write by, by yourself, you know, you can always uh, script them and uh, then use them. So click on columns so we can see that all the columns are there. We want to actually get all the columns and OK. Now our next step is uh, to create a, a flat file or common delimited file. And uh, we want to create in that folder what we have created in the start of the um, pack, uh, demo. So this is where I want to create these uh, files. Okay, so I'm going to copy this one. Uh, I can uh, just uh, hard code here the path for the file, but I don't want to do it because uh, in production or other environments when we are going to deploy it, the path will change, and uh, we want to have the flexibility to to change the values of these uh, uh, paths by using the configuration instead of making changes in the package. You know, we don't want to open the package every time and make changes. So let's create a variable called output folder path. All right. This is going to be string type. So this is a value. Okay. Now you can add the backslash here, or we can write in the expressions, you know, and because we are going to append this one with the file name. You can also go ahead and create the file name here, you know. Uh, if you think like in production or sometime later uh, your file name can change that you want to create you know so for now I'm gonna create a variable called uh, file name and I will say customer you know customer file for now okay all right so let's go and bring the destination so we de uh, we are going to write our records to the flat file. Uh, so we we need to get the flat file destination. All right. Okay. Double click here. So the very first thing we what we have to do we have to create a flat a flat file connection manager. So uh, click new. And then uh, it it give us a different option. You want to create a delimited like common delimited file and uh, whatnot. And uh, fix with, with with the road limiter and drag right. So there are different options. I'm gonna have the demos for the later one as well. But right now we are going to create a file with the delimited comma delimited. You know, okay. So hit okay. And uh, <clears throat> the next part is where you do you want to create that file. So browse and uh, go to the folders. I have uh, on the desktop. I have <clears throat> created a output folder. That's where I want to create that. For now, you can give any name. Okay, so I'm giving test file for now, but we are going to write expressions. Those are going to overwrite with the actual file name. So uh, you can, uh, you know, change the extension what you like. Uh, I, I'm going to leave this one to txt. You can have .csv. You know, depends over whatever you like or whatever is your requirement. So okay. Now let's go back and uh, see what options we have here it is uh, giving us a uh, default uh, you know english uh, um, united states uh, the code page is uh, 1252 nc latin one so that that's the um, um, coalition uh, that we have uh, used by default for our uh, as sql server or and uh, windows as well for this uh, machine and it is asking format what format so we want to delimited and text qualifier for each of the column uh, you want to put some um, single quotes or double quotes around your text you know uh, i'm going to leave this one as it is for now uh, header row delimiter uh, this one is a carriage return left uh, li line feed 
uh, so what it happened like you are writing some document and uh, you enter so it take you all the way to the next line and then uh, on the it start from the left side you know so that's what it is um, you want to head a row to skip so uh, no we don't want to have the, uh, that one uh, column names in the first row yes we want to have that and now let's go to the columns we can see uh, row delimiter is uh, also um, carry return line feed and uh, that's where it's going to bring to the next line and uh, column delimiter is a comma so we can see that we can always change it according to the requirement but for this one uh, we are fine with this so go to advance you know so we can see that now we have first name last name all those columns here okay so let's say instead of first name if we want to have something like this so we want to give a file with the complete name so first okay all right so if you want to change the names here you have the options you can come here and uh, you know you can change the name uh, of the columns that you are going to create uh, you know last name all right okay and uh, the same goes here address and all not but, but i'm going to leave this one as it is for now um, but I just I showed you how you can change the column names if you need to uh, in the output file. Okay, so you can preview it. So, okay, it is showing your ID, first name, and all those. Now hit OK and override data in the file. As we will be creating the file with the date and time, and um, I don't expect you will be running your package, you know, twice in a minute. So, you know, uh, it is going to create a new file every time and you don't need to override the data. But leave this one as it is if you are going to override the data in the same file and you are not creating the file with the new timestamp or, you know, you are creating a file with one file, a daily file just with a date. And yes, if uh, that file will be recreated, you want to override the data. So hit preview. Okay. Check the mappings. So ID is map, map to ID, first name, F name is uh, map to the F name. Right now, as we have changed the name of the columns, so it is not <clears throat> mapped automatically. So we have to go back and map them, okay? So now we have mapped all of those columns from our source to destination. Uh, so we hit okay. So if uh, now I will go and execute my package, it is going to create a file in the folder with the name test file okay but that we don't want in we want to have create a file with customer file name and we want to add the timestamp so if i would re rerun it it is going to override it you know that's that's what it will do let's stop it and uh, rerun it again so every time we rerun our ssis package it is going to override the file you know and uh, in other words, is delete the file and uh, recreate the new file. So uh, the records are not appended, but they are overwritten in the same file. And uh, we don't want it. Every time we run a file, we want to create a new file with the timestamp. So that's where we are going to make some modifications in the connection manager of flat file. Excuse me. And we will be using these two variables, output file folder and file name. So right click on the flat file connection manager, go to properties, and then what you see here, you have to move a little bit up and down and find expressions. Now in front of the expression, click on this button and then click on the properties and find a connection string. Okay. So we have a connection string right here. Okay. Connection string is a complete path to the folder and then file that's what it is going to use and then we need to build the connection string by using our variables so we have output folder here all right and then we want to add the file name to it all right so we have the file and uh, this is a you know we have full complete folder path and then file name is added to it but we want to add the date time with it so what we have to do we have to bring the date time so if i will bring it get date here
it is going to throw an error because get date is not compatible with the string so what we have to do we have to convert the get date into the string so dt underscore str comma 50 comma one two five two that's the collation code and if i will evaluate expressions now it is creating or it is appending or um, concatenating the file with the uh, date time with the file name so first of all i want to add underscore so i can separate the file name from the date time itself okay so all right the second part what i want to do i do not want these hyphens and actually i just want the 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 date and the time i don't want the time to all the way like uh um uh, my my milli, milliseconds you know so i, I just want to have minutes maybe you know and uh, seconds and uh, t till this point that's what i want to have it so if i will use a substring okay and i can uh, use 1 comma 19 that's that's what i think like you know uh, these many characters so okay so we, we we have with 1 comma 19 we have we have what we needed we have date and time till two seconds so that's fine now i want to replace these hyphens with underscore as well so you replace function is uh, also available in expressions that you can use and then what you need to do we want to replace hyphens with underscores all right so we are replacing hyphen with underscore here okay let's evaluate it okay so hyphens are um, replaced with the underscore the next step you uh, you have these colons you can also go ahead and change them if you want it and uh, yeah if you would not probably you will get error you know in the file name so let's replace them as well so we are replacing with underscores as well i mean your choice you can always replace with the blank value you, you know replace the uh, spaces between them or if you have some other character that one you want to use it you can use it so in my case that's what i'm using okay now at the end of what you want to do you want to add the extension of the file so i am using dot txt so it's a text file so that's what i want okay so now every time what's going to happen when the file is going to be created this uh, expression is going to evaluate it and provide this value to the connection manager and uh, that's what it will use to create the file so hit ok ok now let's run our ssis package and see if the file is created with the time date time let's go back here and we can see that the customer file is created with the date time let's click on here see the records came correctly all right so let's go back and run mo one more time and make sure it's, it's working properly like it should create another file with the timestamp or date time so okay wow so it did create the next file with the uh, date time and also you know have all those records so it, we can see that our package is working perfectly fine and uh, that's how you know um, you will be creating your SSIS package where you will be reading the data from different sources and creating the flat file, CSV file, text file with the date time stamp. You know. Uh, thanks very much for watching this video. You can always visit uh, visit us at sqla.blogspot.com where you can find uh, SSIS interview questions or other blog uh, uh, posts related to the SQL Server. Thanks.